guys, welcome back. Sorry it's taking me so long to get to this vlog, but first of all, the house was noisy. Second of all, I meant to put up some Rebels backdrop stuff, but these are the only pieces of Rebels artwork I could find, and I know I've got more of Hera and Sabine and Kanan, but they have gone missing, and that, when it comes to losing things, I previously was sure I knew where they were. I feel like Marvin the Martian. It's made me very angry. Anyway, since I've already done the top 10 best Clone Wars episodes, today I want to go through and do the top 10 best Rebels episodes. Now again, as with all my top 10 countdowns, this is just based on personal opinion, but the factors I'm taking into consideration are story, action, character development, and animation, adding up to a final rewatchability score. Ergo, how easy or how enjoyable would it be to watch it a second time, even if you're just enjoying the art end of it. So, this took quite a while to compile. I was going through this stuff, like, literally all day, which is pretty crazy. Without further ado, I'm going to start with number 10 on the list, and that is Zero Hour. That's from Season 3, and it's a two-parter, Episodes 21 and 22. This made the list because it shows the bad guy sort of winning. It's got, uh... Grand Admiral Thrawn in there, and he shows just how deadly he can be, and the rebels barely get away by the skin of their teeth, and also Bendu, the giant creature that Kanan has been talking to since losing his sight, uh, he's like, leave me alone, I just want to sleep, and he turns into a big storm and goes absolutely haywire. The story was pretty good, uh, this tops the charts for both action and animation, and it was okay for character development but that stuck it in the number 10 slot. The escape from that particular planet was really, really well done. Of course, you know, me and space battles, if it's not a space, if there's no space battle in something that's supposed to be sort of a climactic Star Wars thing, it doesn't quite feel like Star Wars. So space battles, awesome. Coming in at number nine is Twin Suns. This was also from season three and it was episode 20. Uh, this was one of my personal favorite episodes of all time because it had Obi-Wan and they were on Tatooine and we finally get vindication for the terrible injustice that was done to Obi-Wan Kenobi by bringing back someone he had supposedly killed in episode one. And that's Darth Maul. Now, don't get me wrong, Darth Maul was really well done, but it is so incredibly satisfying to see him finally, definitively, die in this one. And it's like, okay, good. Obi-Wan's work at defeating a Sith Lord was not for nothing. Ugh. So, yeah, that was really, really good. And, of course, being back on Tatooine, it had some interesting character development for Ezra. And that end scene with a young Luke just in silhouette and hearing Aunt Beru's voice, that was just, yes! I love that episode so much. Before I get to number eight, just a disclaimer. Every episode that I have on this list between uh, number 8 and number 4 is rated the exact same, which is 4.7 out of 5. There's so many great episodes of Rebels. This was such a hard decision. And the only reason I have them in this particular order is because this is my order of personal favorites. But that doesn't necessarily mean, say, number 4 is any better than number 8 or vice versa. So feel free to rearrange these however you like. But I had to put them in some sort of order since I'm doing a top 10. So that being said, coming in at number eight is Trials of the Dark Saber. That was also from season three. It's episode 15. This one's really good because it sort of expands on the relationship between Sabine and Kanan, which you don't see a lot of. Mainly Sabine seems to be closer to Hera than anyone else, but this time we get to see Kanan uh, teaching her a little bit and sort of expanding his horizons as to who his students are. And even though she doesn't have the force, she learns swordsman swordsmanship and control and it's really really great to see expanding on Sabine's character she can really get into the depths of who she is and finally at the end her embracing who she is as a Mandalorian that is just so cool and yes Mandalorians are pretty cool they're the only armored character I would ever vaguely consider uh, making a costume for Okay, coming in at number seven is Steps Into Shadow. That's also from season three. It's the first two episodes. Uh, this made the list because it's got Kanan learning how to deal with his blindness and learning to see 
uh, sort of through the force, you know, learning to use his other senses besides just his sight, and also getting out of this pit of depression that he's apparently fallen into, just, you know, get back in there and get things done. So, yeah, it's a really, really good episode. I really like it. You know me, of course, you know me. I am a humongous Kanan fangirl. I absolutely adore Kanan. Second favorite Jedi ever next to Luke, and I love the guy, and I love to see him, you know, learning and succeeding, so... Coming in at number six is Rebel Assault. That's episode nine of season four. This one made the list because one word, X-Wang. X-Wang! I, you know, you guys know how much I love X-Wings and seeing them in an epic space battle is awesome! And we get to see more of Hera's piloting skills and I think Wedge is in there. It's been a while since I've actually seen the episode all the way through, just a disclaimer. But that is so cool! I love that episode so much. It's got some great battles, of course, at the end. Harry gets captured, and Kanan um, sort of learns to sort of let learns to like let go of his emotions to some extent. Not immediately rushing after Hera, but learning to slow down and wait and make a plan first. And of course, the wolf, the loath wolf, was the one to stop him. But he's like, okay, I don't really get this, but. All right, I'll listen to you. Great episode, especially for character development, action, and animation. Those all top the charts for this episode. It's really, really good. I think out of, probably out of all of them, it feels the most like original trilogy Star Wars between the music and the space battles and lightsabers and everything, you know? So it's really, really cool. Coming in at number five, halfway through the list, is A World Between Worlds, and that, of course, is from season four, and it's episode 13. This one was one of the, I guess, more unusual episodes, but I really, really like the way they did it. Um, they had to have some excuse to bring Ahsoka back, and looking at it now, I'm kind of glad they did. I'm glad that Ahsoka's not, like, gone forever, but uh, it was a really good character development for Ezra, um, even though he had the chance to actually jump in and save Kanan that might have meant that he would not be around and Hera and Sabine and everyone else would have died. It could have been. If Kanan had not sacrificed himself, no one else would have been able to get away. And so by acting unselfishly, he learns to let Kanan go, even though it's a wrenching process and he hates to do it, he does it anyway. And that's part of Ezra's development on his path to being a Jedi. And it's really, really good to see. Another thing I like about The World Between Worlds is, so as we found out, Mark Hamill is coming back for Episode 9. This is an avenue that they could use to bring him back, not just as a ghost, but in a physical form. If they jump into The World Between Worlds in Episode 9 and use that to bring Luke back, that would be sick. That would be the coolest thing ever. JJ, if you're listening, hello! Okay, anyway, they probably won't do that, but it's just an idea. Coming in at number four is The Honorable Ones. That's from season two, and it's episode 17. This one is really, really good because it has Agent Callus basically at the mercy of Zeb. And the fact that Zeb is not willing to kill Callus because Callus has been injured it teaches uh, Agent Callus a lot about who the Lasat people are or were, as the case may be, and that uh, he can learn how to, they can learn to respect each other, even though they're on opposite sides of the fence. And also, it's there that Callus begins to see, I guess you could say, the error of his ways. Like, wait a minute, am I fighting for the right side here? It plants a little bit of doubt in his mind. And of course, we see Callus later on in the series acting as a rebel informant, which is very cool. Coming in at number three, rated a 4.8 out of 5, yeah, it's pretty high up there, is Twilight of the Apprentice, and that's a two-parter from season three, episodes 21 and 22. Now, before you string me up for this, I know this is the episode in which Ahsoka um, died, and Kanan got blinded, and Maul got away, and there's a lot of things to dislike about this episode, but what I like about it so much is that it's so well done. I mean, between the music and the animation and the character development and the story even, it is so good. And Ahsoka finally coming face to face with her former master. The thing is, she sees him. She knows who Darth Vader is. She knows what Darth Vader has done. 
but she is able to see her master underneath that mask, both, you know, literally and figuratively. So I'm wondering if, uh, that makes me kind of wonder if Ahsoka knew when Anakin turned back to the light after he saved the life of his son. I'm, I'm kind of willing to bet because, you know, the bond between Master and Apprentice is the only bond that's encouraged in the Jedi Order, and it's also one of the strongest bonds there is. So, yeah, that was a very, very good episode. At the end of the series, it let... At the end of the season, it left you worried about everybody, like, oh gosh, Kanan's blind, Ahsoka's gone, what are they gonna do now? So, yeah, really, really good way to end the season. Number two, uh, this was a very difficult decision to come to. Just as a, uh, a disclaimer, not all of these episodes are episodes that I absolutely love watching, that I enjoy watching. Twilight of the Apprentice is one of them, even though it was really well done. This is the other one. Number two is Jedi Knight. Uh, that's season four, episode ten. You guys saw my reaction to it. If I think too long about it, it will make me cry again. You can say I'm acting if you want, but seriously, I got so attached to Kanan over the course of the series that this episode just about destroyed me. I... Oh, like a knife plunging into my heart and then twisting. I didn't only hurt that one of my favorite characters ever is gone now, but I hurt for his family, essentially. Hera, who, by the way, at this point is carrying his unborn child. Ah! And Sabine and Ezra and Zeb and heck, even Chopper, they all lost somebody really, really close to them. And that was a big hurdle for everybody to try and overcome. I mean, you see Hera in the next episode, she's just totally... It's like she... Almost like she shuts down for a while. And it's just... It's heart-wrenching. It's... Uh, it just kills me. But the character development in this one goes through the roof. Kanan learns that the greatest contribution that a Jedi or anyone else can make is to sacrifice their life to save the life of others. There's actually a verse in the Bible in the book of John, uh, no greater love has any man than this, that, than one that lays down his life for his friends. I'm sort of paraphrasing, it's not exact, but it's, I mean, that's the greatest gift that anyone can give another, is to give your own life to save someone else. And we don't know how it would have turned out if Kanan had not stopped. We don't know if the explosion would have gotten them. We don't know if anyone would have survived. We, we just don't know. We can speculate all we want, but the fact is he saved everybody's life in that last moment. Including the life of his unborn child who he didn't even know about, but that's just, ah, I'm gonna cry. Anyway, but the animation, story, character development, everything was done so well. It is like the mark of excellence in this series. And finally, The Clumsy Jedi's number one best Rebels episode ever is series finale, fam family reunion and farewell, season four, episodes 15 and 16. Uh, this one also gets a five out of five. Uh, it's, it's just, it's perfection. As far as Star Wars goes, you cannot get any better than that. The story is amazing. The character development is really good, especially for Ezra, and then later at the end for, um, Sabine. The fact that she's willing to still go after him after all these years, that says something about how close they are and their, their friendship. That, that is so cool. Um... And the fact that Ahsoka comes back, a la Gandalf, <laughs> one more time that she found her way back, and now they're off to go find Ezra. I want to see the end of that story! But the way they ended it with her mural, that is... So there you go, guys. That's been the Clumsy Jedi's uh, top ten best Rebels episodes ever. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video and you want to see more like them, go ahead and click that little subscription button down below. Question of the day. Which episode of Rebels is your absolute favorite? Go ahead and post a comment below. But until next time, this is the Clumsy Jedi signing off. Bye, guys.